I am the only daddy you got. I am the damn paterfamilias. But you ain't bona fide. Where's your mama? Like many of us, actor George Clooney spent much of the pandemic puttering around the house, doing laundry, and taking stock. Tracy Smith is at home with George Clooney. Are you enjoying being home all the time mm -hmm. now? Well, look, no, <laughs> of course not. We met George Clooney last November at his home in L.A., where he'd spent the bulk of the pandemic with his wife, human rights lawyer Amal Clooney, and their two kids. He says it was all good, just maybe a little less, well, glamorous than he's used to. It's been a while since I did, you know, 15 loads of laundry in a day and mop floors and, you know, all these doors over here I stained. Um, and it was, you know... I always say I felt like my mother in 1964 because <laughs> she had two kids and no help, and I don't know how she did it now. I have more sympathy for her now than ever. You cook? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, my wife is Lebanese, and I'm telling you, she can do anything. She's amazing. Um, she accomplishes things that I'm in awe of. She's never, if she walks near a pan in the kitchen, the, it, the whole place would fall apart. <laughs> Literally, and I'm not kidding, she tried to hard boil an egg once by putting an egg in a pan on the stove without any water in it. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. My wife makes reservations for dinner. <laughs> her mother doesn't cook. Her sister doesn't cook. Uh, so I do the, uh, a lot of the cooking in the family. And have you been cutting your own hair? Mm -hmm. I've been cutting my own hair for 25 years. So it has nothing to do with quarantine? No. Nah. Look, I have, my hair's like really like straw, you know, and so it's easy to cut. You can't really make too many mistakes. So years ago, uh, I bought a, a thing called a Flowbee, which when we you were did kid, not. when I was a kid, yeah. The infomercial, the yeah, Flowbee. This ingenious device lets you give yourself and family perfect haircuts every time. Yes. It comes with a vacuum cleaner yes. and the clippers. Yeah, I still have it. Stop it. You I, don't use it. My haircuts take literally two minutes. I go. Is, <laughs> is, the, is this Flowbee? Yeah, it's Flowbee. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, listen, man, it works. <laughs> now. You know, I wouldn't do it to my wife. You've been using my hair treatment. Your hair treatment. Excuse me. Have you cut Amal's hair? No, I have not. Okay, that's, that's not allowed. That I, but I have sewed up uh, buttons on her dress before. Really? Mm -hmm. That's so romantic. I'm that's scrappy. actually really sweet. I'm scrappy. I can fix things like anything. Because I grew up, you know, being scrappy, and you had to. So you have a little MacGyvery kind of thing going on. Bit, you can do you know, a lot with a bag of buttons. The, yeah, I can make things work when they don't work. If only for long enough to get through the day. It seems George Clooney can make a lot of things work. He's made more than four dozen films and picked up two Oscars along the way. A real life good guy who's had great success, more often than not, playing the bad guy. Because the house always wins. Play long enough, you never change the stakes, the house takes you. Unless, when that perfect hand comes along, you bet big, and then you take the house. Been practicing this speech a little bit. Did I rush it? Felt like I rushed. That was good. I liked it. You know, it's a funny thing. I didn't get it, but I realized not not that long ago that I played a, you know a crook more than anything. I mean, Michael Clayton. I'm a rotten, crooked lawyer, and you know, I played mostly crooks. You know, which kind of surprising to me. I didn't think of it. I always thought of them as lovable. Well, they are lovable crooks. But usually there's something a little, you know, you're right, it's true. What does that say about you? I got problems. <laughs> Sometimes it's impossible to save a kid's life and the only thing we can do is save them from suffering. Clooney first came to fame as a doctor in the NBC series ER but he was hardly an overnight success. He'd struggled in Hollywood for years after moving out from his Kentucky home with little more than the shirt on his back. It was 1982 when I wanted to move out to uh, LA and I had a beat up 76 Monte Carlo, rust all over it. I would fill it with oil and check the gas and I drove it out here in three days. I didn't turn it off. <laughs> because? I was afraid I couldn't turn it back on. And uh, I got here, broke down, and I got a bicycle, and I rode to auditions all around town for uh, a year and a half. On a bike? Yeah. And uh, 
I did construction work all around town with for friends of mine. I slept on the floor of a closet of my buddy Tom Matthews' apartment. And never, it never, you know, listen, you're 22 years old, 21 years old, doesn't bother you at all. It really doesn't. As long as you can, you know, you needed to have like, you know, you needed like five bucks a day to live on, you know. It's true. Now 60 and a millionaire many times over, he keeps busy with the Clooney Foundation for Justice that grew out of his work in places like South Sudan. All of you should know that um, what you said here today will be heard and listened to around the world. But he'll be the first to say that having a family is his biggest challenge to date, and no surprise, his greatest reward. I guess the question is, in your own life, does having someone to care for change things? Yes. There is no question that having a, a mall in my life changed everything for me. No question about that. Um, it was the first time that everything that she did and everything about her was infinitely more important than anything about me. And then we had these, these two knuckleheads and it is very fulfilling and something I wasn't at all, didn't see coming. So, you know, when we, we never talked about marriage when we were dating and I asked her out of the blue, took her a long time to say, uh, I was on my knee for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I finally said, look, I'm gonna throw my hip out. Her parents, we told that story to her parents and they're like, there's something wrong with his hip. <laughs> and, then, and we never talked about having kids. And then one day we just said, what do you think? And, you know, and then we go to the doctor and, you know, you do the ultrasound and they're like, yeah, hey, you got a baby boy. I was like, baby boy, fantastic. And they go, and you got another one there. And I was like, I was up for one. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, I'm like, I'm old. And all of a sudden it's like two and I literally, you know, it's hard to get me to not talk. And I just stood there for like 10 minutes just staring at this piece of paper going, too. Silently. But now it's silent. <laughs> but I'm so glad they have each other, you know. So it is a wonderful thing, right? It's unbelievable. I understand. When he's not making movies, like last year's The Midnight Sky. All right, guys, that's it. Congratulations. We got this one done. Thank you. Clooney says he spends a third of his time with his foundation, but quietly. For a guy who's now made a couple of space movies, George Clooney is, forgive me, remarkably down to earth. So do you, I'm curious, mm. just watching you, you're very self-deprecating, and I'm mm. wondering, is, is that something that is in your nature, or do you work on that? I think it's in my nature. I think, you know, a lot of times the, the secret is you take the gun out of their hands before they can shoot you, you know. I just, I think that that's a, it's a healthy way of looking at the world. There's a line in, I think it was a movie called Out of the Past. Uh, Robert Mitchum says, I never learned anything from hearing myself talk. It's kind of a good, it's a good measure to go by.